It is now time to animate our little guy, so let's get right to it. You guys have probably been waiting for this moment, for all your life animation now to animate. It's going to be quite fun and quite simple. Let's increase the size of the, of the timeline over here. And we're going to be using the timeline to add in what are called keyframes for our animation. You can see our timeline is basically composed of frames and it goes all the way up to 250 frames. Now, an animation is 24 frames per second. And we could see that here, if we go to the render settings, says 24 frames per second. So 24 frames is one second of animation. How cool and crazy is that? So in here, in 250 frames, there's about 10 seconds of animation right here. And we could see that by hitting the space bar, we play our animation. And right here, you could see his playing at 24 frames a second, and it shows you what frame it's currently on. We can hit shift left arrow to go back to the beginning. All right. To add in keyframes, it's quite simple. We're going to select our arm shift, select the legs and the other arm. And on frame one, we're going to hit the IK key, which is going to bring up the insert keyframe menu. And we can insert a location rotation keyframe, a scaling keyframe, or a location and rotation. Or if you're crazy like us, we're going to answer a location rotation scaling keyframe. So let's do just that with all those selected and sort of location rotation scaling keyframe. And now you could see that adds in a little tiny pier, not pyramid diamond shape right there, meaning that there is a keyframe on frame one and a keyframe basically tells Blender that on frame one, these objects have a location, rotation and scaling of this right here. This is how they are located, scaled, and rotated. Then we're going to go ahead to frame 5. Hit 3 to go in the side of you, grab the arm and bring it back by hitting R to rotate, and bring this foot forward by hitting R to rotate control 3 to go to the other side. We're going to bring this one forward, and we're going to bring this one back, like so then, shift, select all of these body parts of our cube, Guy hits Hitty Location, Rotation, Scale, and check that out. Now, if we scrub through this, how cute is that? We got our little guy doing a little forward motion movement thing. All right, and again, right now, we're creating a walk cycle animation for our character. That way, he's able to walk around pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and go to frame 10. And here's what we're going to do is frame 10. We want it to have the same position as on frame 1. So with all the body parts selected, just select the first keyframe. It's shifted to copy it and bring it over to frame 10. And now you will see what that does. We got that and then that's sweet. Now one thing we want to do is we want to make sure we have the same amount of spacing in between each keyframe. And since our first frame is on frame one, you can see that right here, we only have four keyframes in between. So let's shift like both of these and move this one up one so that we have five frames in between both of these. Now let's go to frame 16, which is five frames ahead of this one and hit three. Now this last pose, we had this arm going back. So now we're going to have it going forward like this arm are to rotate, go forward. This one are to rotate, go back, go to the opposite side and do the opposite thing. This one will go back and this one will go forward. And then once again, shift select all of them, eye location, rotation, scale. And let's see what we got now. Sweet, how cute is that? So we are character doing that and it's looking good. All right. Now let's say, because right now, if we hit space bar to play, he does it twice. But let's say we wanted to loop indefinitely. Well, there's two ways we could do that. We could hit the A key to select all these and hit shift and copy all these keyframes frames. And now he's going to do it twice or four times. So cute. But let's say we want to do it indefinitely. And copying these keyframes for an indefinite amount of time is quite not very practical. So I'm going to hit control. Easy to undo these and we're going to split the viewport. Go to the bottom left corner until you get some crosshairs. Left click and drag, and we're going to change this one to the graph editor, don't, don't. Oh my God. Overwhelming, right? 
Well, it's actually quite simple. As we start to get into it, the graph editor is basically kind of like a visual representation of your keyframes. You can see right here on the left, you have your different objects, cube 0, 0, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which are these cubes right here. And under Object Transform, you have the X, Y, Z location, rotation, and scaling. Then on the right here, we have a visual graph representation of all these graphs and all these axes. So it's quite simple. All we have to do right now, if we select this arm and hit R and X, you can see it's rotating on the X axis. So we need to go right here to Object, Transform, and look for X rotation. And you can see the X rotation graph. If I zoom in, middle mouse click to move is all the way up here. All the way up here, a part of it is. And you can see a graph is made up of handles. If I left click and drag and had G to grab this handle, you can see when I move this handle, because it's moving the X rotation graph, it actually affects the rotation of our object. And also down here, it's moving the keyframe. I'm going to write. Click to undo that and not move it now. Right here on going up and down, this is the amount. And then going left and right, this is how many keyframes. So again, this is how, how intense or less intense and left and right is the amount of time or keyframes. But we're not going to mess with that. Oh, we're going to do is like the X rotation, hit the end key to bring up the properties and go to modifiers. Ha <laughs> ha, more modifiers, brilliant. Just like these modifiers, we have graph modifiers. We could add a modifier and select cycles, and now it will cycle these keyframes indefinitely. So if we hit shift left arrow, go back to beginning and space bar to play, you could see check that out. It basically loops our animation back and forth indefinitely. Now you can see that right here, we have an issue where on the last frame, it just snaps to that frame right there instead of being interpolated and twining in between that frame. So all we have to do is go ahead and select the first frame right here. And we're going to hit Shift, copy this over, and we're going to copy it over. One, two, three, four. And the reason we're only going to copy it over four frames is because this last frame and this first frame the arm is in the exact same position. And so when it repeats, if we copy it one more frame, it's going to have this frame twice. So it's going to be one frame longer anyways. This, if it doesn't make sense, it will make sense as we go. But you could see now, it loops seamlessly. Because again, it goes from here to here to here to here. And then, after frame 20, it goes back to frame 1 basically and then starts all over again. You could see, for example, if I take this and move it ahead one frame so that we have five key frames in between, you can see that there's a little bit of a lag. And if I exaggerate this, let's exaggerate this a little bit, you can see that it's, it's a little bit slower. So I'm just gonna, like I said, move it for key frames from here. One, two, three, four, and boom, there we go. All right, now we just had to do the same for all the other body parts because right now, is rocking and rolling with one arm. Except nothing else is moving though. We just have to go this arm. Actually, let's select all of these first. All three of those select the first keyframe shift and move it ahead. One, two, three, four. And then on all these, we just need to go here, X rotation modifiers, add modifier cycles, and do the same for all of them. X rotation, add modifier cycles, X rotation, uh, don't select X rotation, X rotation, add modifier cycles, and now let's see what we have created. It's alive. Not as scary as Frankenstein, but it's too cute. It's too cute to be Frankenstein. And there we go. We have a walk animation. However, right now he's kind of doing like a moonwalk in place and not moving. So in the next video, we're going to see how to actually move our character a little bit, and then we're going to make him kick something and a couple other things and move to the next character animation in this course. All right, let's go ahead and save this. You know, the drill file, save as and that right here, we're just going to save as character for save it. 
and I will see you in the next video. Child for now, Alvo.